Hello, everyone. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, 2015. I am speaking now on behalf of the Thai Alliance for Human Rights. Uh, actually, I am going to read a statement that was verbally and conversationally given at the 13th Assembly of States Parties to the Rome Statue for the uh, International Criminal Court at the United Nations on December 12th this year. Um, I'm going to read the official version, written version of that statement so that you know and understand about the obstacles that Thais have faced on their path to ratifying the Rome Statue so that the Thai citizens would get protection from the International Criminal Court in terms of justice. Um, I will, I'm going to read the statement now. Dear respected colleagues, it is undeniable that Thailand needs to ratify the Rome Statue as soon as possible to prevent another massacre and to ensure that the rule of law and democracy principles are freely exercised without the obstructive influences of the old establishment and its allies. Let's examine the obstacles that have kept Thailand from ratifying the Rome Statue so that ways forward can be identified and implemented more responsively. The following obstacles must be noted. 1. The Thai King, according to the Article 8 in the Thai Constitution that has never been changed, despite many coups so far, stipulates that the King is never to be criticized, irritated, nor sued in any way. This is in violation of the Rome Statute's principle of not allowing any exception for impunity. As King Pumipon seems very comfortable without the ratification, many Thais are led to falsely believe that ratifying the Rome Statue would harm their revered king. 2. The royal Thai armies who have claimed their unshakable loyalty to the monarchy and toppled many elected governments have massacred civilians at least five times during the past 40 years and repeatedly been granted loyal pardon or amnesty by King Pumipun. Whether or not they take power from the civilian government, they remain influential enough to stop any government from prosecuting them. Note that the annual budget for the Royal Thai Army has almost tripled for the year 2015 in comparison to that allocated before the 2006 coup d'etat. Number three, Thai politicians have been too afraid to deal with issues that may even remotely concern or irritate the monarchy in any way for fear of being toppled or imprisoned for violating Article 8 in the Constitution and Article 112 in the Penal Code. Thus, actions by many governments in the past 15 years also have stopped before ratification stage. Number four, under the army rule today, Thailand has been enforcing the martial law that was created in 1914 or 100 years ago during the absolute monarchy. Hence, all political movements have been strictly banned, monitored, or controlled. Military court has been used instead of the civilian courts, especially when charges, uh, charges are against dissidents. Number five, Article 112, which is an ancient less majestic law enforced arbitrarily and resulting in 5 to 15 years of imprisonment for each act, keeps people from doing anything even remotely connected or concerned with suing or prosecuting the monarchy. Number six, many NGOs working in Thailand have been threatened 
and thus forced to be adaptive rather than proactive or aggressive enough to the point where their actions could be too little and too late. We have noted that the threats are real and could be fatal. In short, Thailand, like many other countries yet to ratify the Rome Statute, is facing a dilemma of having the people in power, that is, the army, the elites, politicians, and the royal networks, in the position to decide whether to ratify the Rome Statute, when indeed these people in power have been involved in a series of mass crimes that have gone unprosecuted. A difference is that the highly sophisticated networks and the very effective way they work together systematically to create the pretext for the crimes, to execute them, and to hide evidence are very subtle and well disguised. Many may think that we should work hard to educate more Thais about the ICC, but the fact is a great number of Thais know about the, CI the ICC and its necessary role in protecting Thais from more mass crimes as a result of political conflicts and want Thailand to complete the ratification as soon as possible. How do we go forward? Can the people have a say in the decisions? How will international organizations and governments help to expedite the overdue process? What can a non-governmental, non-partisan, and non-profit organization like TAR do to help or to work collaboratively with the CICC? We will appreciate your advice and input. Please visit the website being developed and share uh, to share detailed information and facts regarding the above issues at http freetitizens.org slash CICC. At the end of the, stat the statement, Thai Alliance for Human Rights also provides the following facts. The Royal Thai Army has more generals than nearly any other country but the Thai army was not created to fight wars, according to The Economist, published on December 4th, 2014. Thailand is ranked fourth, well, um, almost 20 times in 80 years, um, among countries with the most coups. Uh, it's written, and, and I'm afraid um, the way I, re I, I read it might not be um, understandable. Let me do this again. Thailand is ranked fourth among countries with the most coup d'etats, both successful and attempted. Successful coup leaders have all been blessed by the royal power to legitimize and pardon them by King Pumipon. Thais have witnessed a series of massacres acted by royal guards and armed royalists uh, during the King Bumipon reign, namely in the year two, uh, 1973, 1976, 1994, 2008, 2009, 2010, and 2014, all against civilian dissidents and justices were not given to the victims. Few or virtually none have been tried or punished. Next, King Pumipon is Commander-in-Chief of the Thai military. All laws must be endorsed by King Pumipon and so must appointments of high-ranked army, police, and civilian officers, and even monks. Out of 29 prime ministers so far, there are 15 high-ranked army or police leaders, 9 palace approved or backed civilians, and only 5 civilians who rose to power via elections, and 4 of whom are from the Thaksin camp. 
The Les Majestes Law, or Article 112, has been used by the army junta and royalists to suppress pro-democracy citizens' voices and movements. The hundred-year-old martial law made during the absolute monarchy era in 1914 has been and is now being used, and the rampant abuses of people's rights and denial of justice have happened in extended presence of the effective military court. Lastly, having killed civilians in 2009, 2010, and most recently 2014 before the coup, the royal Thai army leaders in power through coup d'etat are now attempting to reach the royal amnesty to get themselves off the hook. So please watch carefully. And I hope you understand more about the reasons why Thailand has not ratified the Rome Statute and know about the obstacles. I'm asking you all to help us fight toward the ratification of the Rome Statute by Thailand. Uh, we are willing to work with you all. We welcome all advice and suggestions and we would be uh, honor to work with you in pushing all countries around the world toward ratifying the Rome Statute so that the universality of justice can be realized globally. Thank you very much. And again, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year.